welcome everyone to another chat with Entrepreneur India. I'm Kavya Pillai and with me is someone who would like to introduce himself. Uh, so, Namaste everyone and thank you for having me here. My name is Akash Ranisan and uh, in very simplest possible way, I'm a happy guy. You're a happy person. <laughs> That's it. That's my introduction because Anything which makes me happy and do not cause cause any harm to anyone else, I do it. So it's making me feel happy travel, I travel. It's making me feel happy being a documentary filmmaker, I do it. Uh, it's making me happy working for climate change, for nature, I'm doing it. Art installation, I'm doing it. Writing, I'm doing it. So I can do anything and everything, but putting so many tags is really confusing out there to understand me. Hence, I'm just simply a happy guy. All right. So, but when we do look you up, there are terms like climate enthusiast and environmentalist. So, what could you say? Which one are we going with? So, see, uh, there was this quotation, uh, Jack of all, master of none. It's an old quotation. The new quotation is, Jack of all, master of one. Okay. Right? So, for me, that master of one thing can be climate change. And I'm jack of all. I do everything and every anything possible on the ground. I just try and do it whenever I feel like. Yeah. Not that I have to do it every day. But then I've made a table by myself, so I'm a carpenter as well. Um, okay. Or I, may, I produce music sometimes as well, so I'm a music producer as well. But nobody knows out there, right? I just do it because I feel like nobody knew that I made a table as well. But then people do know that I'm a photographer or I'm a traveler. So yeah. Interesting. All right. With that, could you tell me your journey on social media? Because you're known prominently on social media. So I just want to know how did that happen? So... Um, Unknowingly, because of my mom, my mom is this person who always wants me to do everything like in alignment proper. Uh, like for example, shoes yahan kyo rakhe, sahi jage pe rakho. So this started as a childhood, but unknowingly this became a part of my brain, how it functioned, that I want to do everything in a proper alignment, in a proper way. So when uh, I started traveling uh, back in 2012 time, um, with God's blessing, I had a phone, which has a decent camera. So I was taking pictures while I was traveling. Whenever I would see a good sunset on a road or sunrise or whatever it is, I will take a picture. All I would try to do is just simply unknowingly in my brain, I will align everything properly, right? I got decent pictures. I put it on social media. People started appreciating and I was traveling anyway. So I started taking more photos, right? And I was going good places with my own will, wherever I want, I can go. So I would go to, let's say, Taj Mahal or mountains or wherever I want to go. People appreciated the photo. Unknowingly, um, it gathered more followers and people started telling me that, hey, you are such a good photographer. I'm like, hey, I'm a photographer. Oh, cool. I am a photographer. So I started accepting it that, hey, I am and I can be better. So from there, first of all, social media became a thing that I have a relationship with. Right. From there, I kept putting on my travel a lot. Slowly, I got into videos as well that have, when I'm doing photography and people are appreciating, you feel like doing more. Like if I appreciate you every day that, hey, let's say you're very good how you communicate. You'll put more efforts and be more, do more of it. Similarly, photography to videography. And then a time came when I started focusing on climate change. And I feel that to most of the people, science is a very boring subject. They don't want to learn more about it. What, what sense does it make to them? So what I thought that, hey, how do we feed food to children? It's like playing with them and just suddenly in between give them the spoon of food or medicine, whatever it is. That's what I started doing with social media. They have put up, first of all, very good travel content okay. uh, so that people are engaging with it. Then put up very good high quality cinematic content of travel. So people are like, hey, this is not only travel, but good visuals as well. And in between that content, a little bit of climate change. Right. So that I'm not boring people and I'm giving them a chance to slowly shift to something rather than 100% climate change. Otherwise, people will be like, hey, suddenly Akash went from photography to videography in travel and suddenly he's a physics or a chemistry or science teacher. We want to unfollow him. Right. Because nobody's coming on Instagram to learn physics today. Right. So that's how I use social media to put things out. Um, and that's the reason on my profile, you'll see all of these three things are visible. Travel, cinematic, good quality content and climate change. Because I want to keep it easy for people. Interesting. And what could you tell me about your upcoming book, I'm a Climate Optimist? So, um, I'm a Climate Optimist. The idea is very simple. Earlier, the book was called I'm an Optimist. That's it. 
but then we thought hey let people know that what are we really talking about so it's my perspective in life i want to see positive in everything because as i said like what you tell me my brain will accept and do more of it unknowingly like, if you appreciate me for something so i really want to see positive things in uh, as in positive angle in everything whatever happens because it has happened i can't control it it's not in my control and also that in a day there are thousand things are going to come up where do i want to invest my time and energy to right uh, happen something wrong happen it's okay can i decide i want to invest my energy on something good that's how my brain functions and even with climate change yes the problem is there and there has been time back in let's say from 27 2017 2018 all of these times i was to cry almost every other day because i would read more and more about climate change okay this is going wrong that is going wrong and we are not taking action um human species it's uh, climate change is a threat for human species and all those things then i would just cry so am i really in a position to take action no because i'm busy crying and i'm losing out energy on it and i'm not really in a pers- i'm really not living a day in a, with a perspective where i can make the change right so less of a doer i was more of a just a victim but then as a victim i'm not really able to get to the solution do you want to just keep crying that's when the thing came to me that i want to start focusing on being happy and see what can be done now okay there's a problem it's okay accept it now let's focus to the solution that's where this thing came now the book the book talks about different different industries food and beverage is a industry uh, cosmetics is a industry tra- tourism is a industry plastic uh, beauty all of these industry has a one chapter in the book overall there are 10 chapters in each of the chapter i talk about let's say how i got to learn about me being a vegetarian my diet is also impacting climate change right what can i do what is the solution right uh, then uh, the chapter flows like this how i found it the problem the solution and then i also have a resource section because if i tell you that hey you can be a plant based and you say hey akash i want to be how to do be, how to do that i'm like oh i don't know that you can just be that's it so i'm leaving you in between but the book doesn't leave you there the book comes with a resource section where i give you let's say three four option do you want to read more books about this specific ch- subject to learn more you say no I'm, akash i'm not a book person i'm like hey do you want to watch documentaries easy i uh, used to learn no documentaries too long i'm like hey 18 minute ted talk like no 18 minutes is still too long and ted talks are way too serious i'm like hey content creators on youtube and on instagram specifically for food and sustainability you're like okay cool but hey can you just tell me the action i want to take it right now okay here are the online shops you can buy your grocery from in a sustainable way for plant based food you're like akash i don't want to make i want to go out right now here are the cafes here are the restaurant go eat right so cater to everyone Yeah so starting from top you want to learn the deepest thing about the food and sustainability here are the books no i just want to take the action don't want to learn go right now eat at this cafe i can name right now here wherever we are sitting i can tell you cafes in this local area itself where you can go and eat so you're like easy hey this helps and even online platforms which are like aggregators right so where you can go and you can choose which company do you want to buy from they are filtering it out for you Uh, cruelty free plant based whatever so this is ju- just the food chapter that's how we go for each and every chapter you want to buy beauty products there you go these are the brands buy it from we have done the scrutiny on them we have used them personally we have spoken to the company we have tried to investigate in them as much as we can right so to filter it out for you because i know that you won't go out there and start doing a investigation on the brand that hey is it really a good one or not right so that's how the book flows few good things about the book um we have used uh, vegetable ink to print the book right to make it more sustainable because it's not that i want to write everything w- with the chemicals and then preach to you that hey but you go do good do the good thing so we use a vegetable ink then um, it's on fsc environment friendly paper the most friendly list which i could find here in india and when it comes to this much of a bulk printing uh, and also the sustainability of the book itself that how long will it last once we print it and then on the top of it all 100% of my earning as an author all of my royalty uh, go to a charity called greener earth foundation where the money will be used to offset the carbon footprint of the project itself making it india's first carbon neutral book right so you 
use the word sustainability so the next question is on that the word sustainability is used widely and loosely what are your thoughts on the word and how brands are including this word in their advertising and company structure so a uh, lot of people first of all do not really understand the meaning of sustainability uh, sustainability is, so it's like a ladder it's not a final stage you reach on it and now you're sustainable no it's a ladder you keep climbing you be more sustainable more sustainable more sustainable um because obviously everything we do has some of the other impact on environment because we are borrowing natural resources we are emitting different gases which has to be processed in the environment to eventually again bring it back to the neutral right neutral like simple a car being on a neutral gear so um sustainability people first of all they don't understand brands largely like when we really look at the uh, if if in case like a larger brands have a team which sits out in their head quarters and study over there they would understand sustainability but mostly sustainability go out to people in terms of pr or in a uh, let's say media section of the brand pr section of the brand or the what do we call whichever like event organizing part of the brand they are the one majorly who are speaking out the word to people but they don't really understand it okay. right and every time they don't really go out there to cross check it with the people who sit over there with a the degree which can really help them understand that okay what exactly sustainability is so a lot of miscommunication is there but also i feel that it's okay uh, it's all about balance when there are a lot of brands who come out and they use this word for green washing to uh, attract people who are really thinking that hey i want to buy today something sustainable or i want to think uh, for the environment and for my own health i want to buy some sustainable product they do get let's say cheated by the brands who are using this as a green wash but then also it's important when this happens other brands get angry who are really sustainable and they put in more efforts to bring their product out that hey this is actually sustainable right and it helps it's kind of like a competition right and also there are good brands i know i work with i think uh, i don't want to name out a brand individually here but in each of the category whichever industry we talk about from buying my clothes to the food i eat or let's say even if some cosmetic products i use there are pr- uh, brands in india and they are home grown brands they are not multinational brands coming from some other country they are from india itself so locally produced that is also about sustainability that if you are making it locally it's more sustainable but if you bring it from another country there's already a carbon footprint of the whole transportation of that product from another country that's a huge thing so but there are brands which are indian uh, they are making product for whichever category we want and uh, i think i'm really happy about this itself because when what happens whenever i as a consumer mm-hmm. i want to consume sustainable but the problem is akash who's producing it i'm ready to go out buy it but is there a brand who can offer me this thing so i think there are brands who are using it in a good way uh, to actually come out and do good work but there are brands who are using it for green washing and i think with time the brands who are green washing will go low because people will be more aware and uh, even the associations who work in the space for having a uh, authority which really kind of like approve or disapprove whether hey you can't be doing this and using this brands mm-hmm. or using these keywords you can't uh, cheat on consumers like consumer forums right um, even i am trying to uh, i will be is it's already mentioned in the book um, i am coming with a petition on change.org partnering with them where we are requesting people to come and learn more about what is green washing uh, and how exactly the word sustainability should be used and we want to put it out to people to sign up with us as a pledge and then we want to take it to the authorities who are the decision maker in this space to come out with a whole set of guideline which brand needs to follow before they use any of such a keyword sustainability okay. so you're going to keep people in check yeah and that's important because if i really want to help you that hey i'm telling you that read the book go out buy sustainable then you'll be like akash they cheated on me it's written sustainable i bought it so i'm like hey i'm sorry 
I should have made it clear to you. They wrote sustainable, but it's greenwashing. So I'm like, hey, I need to come from this end as well to protect you because I'm the one sending you to the market to buy sustainable. Now I'll be like, Akash, you only told me to buy sustainable, but it's not cheating. So I'm like, okay, let me come from this side as well and keep a check on these brands as well. That, hey, you can't cheat my consumers whom I'm sending to you to buy sustainable. Right. And so, you know, with, with the power of influence, right? Social media has made a lot of people very socially conscious about what they put out there. With your content being a consumer of your content or similar such content, do you feel people um, have now become environmentally conscious as well? So see, indeed, no doubt. And one of the biggest credit goes to uh, COVID, right? Because COVID happened, we realized that how nature is far more really powerful than we can even imagine, right? Within a day, the whole running country or the whole running world was inside their home, right? So, and that kind of like, it gave them a shock that, hey, we really need to respect nature or earth. Or we can't really play along, play around with it. So that's one thing. But then, yes, that made people aware about it that, hey, we want to be more careful about it. Then also constantly scientists putting out words that, okay, guys, you had enough of fun. Uh, future doesn't seem good that's a very important thing when this comes out media picks it up uh, government picks it up um, obviously they decide what they want to do with the data right but the data do go to them that hey there's a let's say warning we have got from the people whom we really trust that they understand the science what should we do about it there are some people uh, let's say media media would say hey I need to inform it to people my job is this I'm going to tell everyone media does their job versus government or companies they think that hey our job is to make money so let's push it till the time we can right till the time we can keep uh, let's say bringing out fuel from the earth uh, like underneath the earth we should keep doing it till the time we can keep mining keep doing it till the last edge that's how business runs right you go to the edge and you just take a u-turn right then before you hit the wall uh, so that's what businesses are doing as of now. That's what government majority is doing as of now. But also that they have other responsibility as well. They have to really look at the D uh, GDP of the country as well. Right? They have to really look at the people's job as well. They can't really say, oh, shut down the company right now because it's not right for the climate change. But they'll be like, hey, if we really shut down the company, there's so much money of government involved into it. People, stakeholders, uh, people who have bought the share or people who work in the company. And do you really want us to shut the company down? No, right? So there are different, uh, let's say, uh, insights we have to, or government has to look at or company has to look at. But for people, they got to know, company got to know, government got to know. So they have all started creating their own ways and timeline that what can we really do about sustainability now. So for people as an individual, for me, it's very easy. I can go sustainable today. Uh, if I, my monthly budget, let's say, for example, is 50,000 rupees per month, it might fluctuate to 55,000 or 60,000 max, but I'll be able to be very much sustainable. I'll find another store which, which might not be 5 kilometers from my home, but now 10 kilometers, but which is selling me all the groceries I want with zero plastic. So I can be sustainable in terms of grocery, zero plastic. I can easily switch to a plastic toothbrush to a bamboo toothbrush, zero extra expense, almost like even lower than that. Or zero plastic, like I don't have to buy plastic bottles, I can just buy a steel bottle and I can carry it every day. Uh, next time, whenever I have to buy a car, I can try to switch it to a renewable energy one. Or I can start taking a cab which is not running on fossil fuel. I can switch to a car which is on electric. So see, as an individual, it's very easy, right? I can make switch quicker. But as a business which is already up and running, the building has already been made, the assembly line is there, the whole thing, operation is running. Right. Me changing it is very difficult. So right? So to people, first of all, it's quite easy. And people have changed on a larger scale. I would say that people are conscious about it. And there are people who are not yet because they are busy with their own life. They have to pay a loan or they have to pay a school fee. So they are taking their own time. But I think the change is there and government is also pushing on their own space. Um, India is one of the largest when it comes to solar energy. India is one of the largest producer when it comes to solar power. That's happening. Uh, wind energy is really up here in India. And even we are pushing a lot 
in a lot of ways which are not seen out there. The subsidy we are giving to companies when it comes to renewable energy or uh, vehicles which are based on hydro fuel cell or EVs. So, yeah. And uh, so recently, um, because of the social consciousness and the education that is already out there about the climate and environment, there are a lot of companies that are going green internally whether it's their offices being renewable, it's their office culture being more environmentally conscious and also taking action about the same. So in your experience, I'm sure you interacted with a lot of brands and businesses. So what are some techniques that did inspire you that you'd like to recommend to everyone, our viewers especially? So uh, obviously it comes in a very different way when it's about a company company functions in a different way as I said and individual functions in a very different way but obviously there are companies whom I have interacted with and I work personally with time to time one of the very impactful thing I actually like is switching to a sustainable renewable energy source right because you have an office you're stable you know that you want to be there and obviously it comes to the it comes for the companies who have their own offices and they know that they are really there they're going to be there for long term but obviously if uh, there are companies who are working with a co-working space or they have rented an office then it's difficult for them to do it because they don't have the ownership of that place and they don't know how long they're really planning to be there but if you really own the office if you're there one of the best investment they can make in, make in terms of investment as well it's one of the best thing they can do is to switch to solar energy right they are not only doing it good for the environment uh, for the employee but also for the company's revenue as well right the money they are saving up on energy consumption that's one of the best thing they can do on a larger scale because it it will cut down a lot of carbon emissions in a clear way Second, what they can really do is that if the company really believes into it, they can start, let's say, bringing in smaller practices which will reflect on their employee and their life thereon. So, for example, whenever people ask me, hey, as an individual, what can I do? So, I really give them a very good and a simple psychological solution is don't do anything larger than this. Just take one step, tiny one, which is change your plastic toothbrush to bamboo toothbrush that's it don't do second step just one step because if i tell you to do six things you'll be just like oh man that's too much my day is already too busy now this guy is saying eat uh, plant-based food then he's saying call a cab which is electric where do i find this cab and where do i look in the menu how do i find where there's no plant-based food into it so you're like confused but if i just tell you one simple thing how it works is when you wake up your mind is empty you're not thinking about anything you're relaxed right and you first thing you do is you brush so now every time when you wake up and you see the bamboo brush you pick it up you're brushing you're looking into the mirror you're seeing you yourself interacting with this bamboo toothbrush your brain will run unknowingly right it will register in your brain that hey i use a bamboo toothbrush why do i do this by the way right so the throughout the day unknowingly you will take decision that hey uh, let's not buy the plastic bottle now you want to drink it from my bottle i have it i'm carrying it so unknowingly and then you're doing it by yourself if i forcefully make you kind are you really kind and am i really kind because i'm forcing you first of all to be kind so i can't really force anyone or push anyone to be kind to earth or to nature or to environment right uh, I can just request you once. So one thing is a request, but 10 things are not requests. 10 things is a demand. Hey, you're asking for too much. So one thing, one request is just switch to bamboo toothbrush. So offices can do similar sort of a thing in the office, right? Uh, change one habit for people that, hey, how many people do you really use in a month? Use as much as you want. It's up to you. I'm not limiting you because it might be possible office functions on paper. They need it. But how much do you use? And in the end of the month, can it be assigned to the HR department that, hey, can you calculate how much paper uh, were used by each employee? And do they really need to plant a tree this month to overcome it? Okay. Right. So now they are accountable for what they are doing and they will feel that, OK, I used it. That's why I have the responsibility to do it. Right. And we are bringing this in their memory that, OK, what I take, I need to give back. Because most of the people think, hey, I'm very sustainable, Akash. I don't do anything wrong. I, I don't have a private jet. 
I am not doing anything wrong. I go to office, work, come back, make money, eat simple food with two of my kids in the family. Uh, we have a one simple car, one bike for my wife, or blah blah blah. Children goes to school in the bus. And simple, we don't do anything. But I'm like, hey, if I start calculating, how many ACs do you have? How much car fossil fuel your car consumes, uh, right? And then uh, your electricity bill, uh, your gas which you're using, right? Or the, the way you've constructed your home, the waste you guys generate. which goes out of your home every morning or the clothes you have bought the technical uh, technological devices you have now do you see how much carbon emission contribution or the subscriptions you have of netflix amazon prime or different different platforms which you watch what is the carbon emission of that it's too much but people don't feel it right so we need to come to a space in our mind we have to accept it like how we have accepted that we need to respect everyone we need to give them their own space they need to make their own decision similarly we have to accept that it's not about the money we borrow we have to return it's also that this space or possibility of living on earth we borrowed we need to return it back so that other people can also coexist with us right on being accountable that's our conversation with akash thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more